everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Stitching with Sue here. Oh my goodness, I have good news. Look who's back in town. Bob is here and Betty's over there sitting on the sidelines. I haven't gotten a chance to play with her yet. So welcome everyone. If you're brand new, I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome you here. Sit back, relax. Hopefully you have a nice beverage of your choice and you just want to sit and relax and just stress, all the stresses of the day just melt away. So my name is Susan Timchak and I am here at Stitching with Sue. I am working on the Sweet Pea Halloween Mystery Block Quilt. I am very behind. Um, those of you that don't know, let's go ahead and get started. I already got, um, this was like a lot of, um, lot of time to stitch around that. So now I'm doing some of the applique work. I just did this little kitty in uh, what's going to be a picture frame. So let me go ahead and get started and then I could fill you in on uh, the news. So welcome here. And if you're brand new, you may not know, but this is Bob. This is my uh, brother Anova's Essence VE 2300 embroidery machine. And over to the right, which you can't really see, is Betty, who is a PE 770. Now, Betty, I bought her secondhand from a woman, and hardly she hardly has any stitches. I mean, she's an older gal, but she just, I don't know, maybe she didn't work right for the woman either. And here's Dory. Dory's here at the party, too. Hello, Dory. Hello. Dory misses all of you, too. So, anyhow, um... Betty was always called Bad Bob and Betty because there was always issues with her bobbin. So we haven't had a chance to play with her yet. Um, I did go today to um, Allentown to pick up my machines at Home Sewing Center LLC. And they are located in Allentown, the Merchant Square Mall. It's not really a mall though, it's kind of like a big warehouse. It's kind of like scary. <laughs> But anyhow, um, so I took both machines there. Um, this machine, Bob, he was having issues. His automatic thread threader wasn't working. Um, I had him at another embroidery place in right, before, right, oh, I don't know, maybe March, February, March, April. It was cold, because I remember um, there was like snow on the ground. And uh, so anyhow, let's see, what are we doing next? Um, I have this pulled up on my, um, okay, we're going to do a little spider web. So I just have to um, go along. I have it pulled up on my laptop so that I can go along with the stitches. So, all right, let me pull that out. Okay, so I can fill you in on what all was happening, but um, Bob had been on a maintenance call not that long ago, and um, I don't know, he just wasn't working right. I'm looking for my thread. I'm all like discombobulated. Uh oh, oh dear, my bobbins just fell, but they're in a, a case, no worries. But um, I don't have anything organized. Um, I cleaned everything up while Bob was away. So, yeah, I have to apologize for that. I'm looking for my black thread. So, let me get my black thread. You'd think I'd be a little organized, but nope, nope, I'm not. And that's just the way it goes around here. So, nope, my thread isn't there. Where did I put my thread? I mean, it's not like I don't have any. So, anyhow, um... Bob was there. They had called me to tell me that the machine was ready about a week after. And here they uh, forgot that I brought two machines in. So I had to wait a little bit longer to, um, and I'm still looking for my black thread because where in the world, it's kind of like, where's Waldo? Where's Sue's black thread? <laughs> but, um... Sorry, I have a hard time doing multiple things at one time, especially when I can't seem to find what I'm looking for. I don't want to get this big honking spool because it's a pain in the behind. Um, but anyhow, let's go. Let's just get this big honking spool. Look at this big spool, folks. Um, so anyhow, yes, Bob was there, and then they worked on Betty, and they called this week after just a few days to say that um, Betty was ready, too. So, you know, we've had 
the remnants of Ian coming through here. Um, this the latter part of this week. So today is Friday. Let me, let me thread this here. Today's Friday. Look at the needle threader, folks. Ta-da! It did thread it, right? <laughs> yes, it did. I, it's hard to see with black thread. Okay, so we did have Ian kind of come through here. And maybe I should have done that in white. It's a spider web down in the corner. Oh, well. Well, maybe you'll see it. I don't know. Whatever. Um... So I had to uh, wait until the weather was kind of nice. So I left work a half a day early today to make the drive to Allentown. I'm in northeastern Pennsylvania, so it's not like it's a huge drive, but it is for me. Um, I have a real hard time seeing at night. Um, I don't know if you are a follower of mine or not, but I do have cataracts and they do bother me at night uh, with the glare of the lights. Okay, so next, let's see next is going to be uh, applique using shelves a piece of fabric large enough to cover the placement line for shelves okay so there's going to be little shelves over there all right gotcha I don't want to do black because I'm probably not going to be able to see that so anyhow um, I wanted to wait till the weather was better because if it's rainy if it's dark if it's real sunny, which unfortunately that's what it was today, um, it's hard to see. So um, I just decided I was taking a half day of work and I was going to go and pick up the machine. I'm just looking through my fabric because if you follow me, you know, I do not organize things. <laughs> I mean, I do in a way, but I don't. Um, because I don't have my fabrics picked out because I just kind of pick as I go. So um, I'm have to report that yes, Bob is home. Betty is home. I'm just trying to think, what do y'all think? Maybe the green, let's do the green. Okay, pick that. All right, so I'll put some green thread in. So let me do this. And then um, I have a whole list of things. Like when I called and, and uh, they said you can come and pick them up. And I said, oh, I said, well, what was wrong, you know, with them? And she's like, well, there's a whole list. Do you want me to read them? And I said, no, no, that's okay. Um, so I do have a list for each of them. And I'll try to read the writing. The writing's a little hard to read. Um, it's, it's nice writing, but it's hard to read. So I do have that skull there. Maybe I have to move my thing over a little bit. And I kind of figured that skull was going to get covered up, so that's okay. Let me just move this over a little bit. All right, so we're doing the applique work for some sort of shelves. I'm going to put that here. I'm going to do this for shelves. I don't know if that's the background. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. Okay, so let's see. Um, so are you wondering how much it costs? You know... We all want to know how much everything costs, and a lot of times we're afraid to ask, but you know what? Here at Stitch and Witsu, we don't hold anything back. We like to tell as it is. So, okay, so that was the chef's. Oh, next will be a black cat. Oh, I don't think you're going to see a black cat, though. The cat is, let me look, the cat is sitting above the shelves, so we may have to change the color of the cat. Okay, so let me trim this out. Now, let me take this out of the hoop here. Oops. I'm doing the big 7x7 seven seven one. So, unfortunately, until I get all these appliques done, there's going to be a lot of ins and outs of the hoop. So, if you want to know how much it cost, total cost for the two machines was, um, hold on a sec, let me look. Um, $318 and I know it's like, oh, you know, I, you know, that emoji with the mouth open and the, the hands going up to the, yeah, like, oh, M G right. But well, what are you going to do? You know, it is what it is. And, um, they both needed work done and you just, you pay the price. So I do want to thank all of you. I'm going to put the hoop back in. I do want to thank all of you that are subscribers because without you, I wouldn't, first off, I wouldn't be here. 
second off, I wouldn't have the money to get them fixed because I use um, my YouTube monies that I get for um, doing the videos and the AdSense, which is what pays me. So the more of you the, that watch, the more of you that share, the more of you that comment, like, and all that, the more YouTube will take the um, the videos and share them with other people. So then that means we get more people to come to my channel. Okay, so I'm going to do, oh, you know what I was thinking? I wasn't going to do that. What color should, I wish you were all here. Maybe I should do, let's do the cat a different color. I know, after you're like, well, Sue, you just threaded it. I know. And I do have um, a few tips to tell you when um, you take that thread out. I apologize, but I just feel like I am all out of sorts today. What color would we do a cat? We do them white? Well, white wouldn't be too good, though, for um, a haunted house, right? How about gold? Let's do gold cat. Because I think you'll be able to see that. So, yes, without all of you, um, first off, I wouldn't be here doing videos. Second off, I wouldn't have the, the um, extra money to be able to invest back into the business and buy things. I do call it a business. It's not really a business. It's kind of like a passion, a hobby. Okay, so we're going to do the cat. The cat's going to take four minutes, then we can chat while it's doing that. Okay, so we're going to have a gold cat. Whatever. All right, so um, let me look at my paperwork. Um, now, what is this? So the PE 770, that was 115. And the one that I'm working on right now, that ended up being one. I don't know what that is. Oh, that was a part, I guess. It's 185. But can I just tell you, when I took it somewhere else, they charged me a lot more money than that. And you know what? It, it didn't really, I don't know. I don't want to say, but it just had some issues with it. So anyhow, so let's let's look at Bob. Because PE 770, I haven't really brought her onto uh, videos because I had such issues with Bob and Thread. So we'll go over her later. But so it says service VE 2300, <clears throat> check hook condition and timing, remove hook to polish point. Now, he told me that they are, they do industrial machines there, so they have all the equipment and stuff to polish different things, which maybe other places don't have that, so that's what that means. Remove hook to polish point. Adjust needle bar height. Now he told me there was something wrong with the needle height on this one. And maybe that was the whole reason why it wasn't threading the needle. Remove thread jam from tension and post tension. And post tension? So apparently there was a thread somewhere. Um, calibrate inner tensions. And I know that that's what they told me. A lot of things were, was the tension on the machine. The tension wasn't set properly. And that's what was causing all the problems. Repair needle threader. Clean and lubricate. Reset service count. Test embroidery. And uh, the threader hook thing was $16.25. So it was $168.75, but then the part was um, $16.25. So, um, he seems to be working perfectly fine. He's humming along. I'm not hearing any of that loud knocking of things. The screen looks so much brighter. I don't know what they did to the screen, but the screen on it looks so much brighter. What do you think? Do you like the gold cat? It should have been black, but it would just blend in. All right. So, so that, that was Bob. And, um... The gentleman that was there when I went to pick it up was a different gentleman than when I dropped it off. And the first guy, his name was Pierce. I didn't get this guy's name. I wish I did. He was an older man. And uh, when I had dropped Bob off, Pierce kind of took the machine and looked it over. He did a stitch test. Um, he did the letter, I think it was the letter I, a capital I. And he knew like right away, he said, you see that? 
when he turns it over, he goes, the tension is totally off. So, I mean, that would explain why it was breaking all the needles. Now, another thing he told me, and I don't know, um, maybe those of you that are out there do this. Um, I didn't. I didn't think I had to. I mean, I never had any actual training on the machine, but he told me when you replace the needle, not to just turn that screw, but to take like a coin, like a nickel, and to tighten tighten that screw up a lot until, you know, you kind of can't anymore. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, let me let this finish and I can show you. So this little thing right here, you know, that is where you loosen to undo the needle. Take, there's a little notch in the side here. Take, um, you know, a dime, a, a, nic a nickel, a uh, I don't know, a five cent piece, whatever, and tighten that up really well. Cause he showed me when I brought it, the needle like almost fell right out. So you know how I told you I was having all the broken needles? That could be the reason why. Oh, I dropped my scissors, hold on. So that's one tip that he told me. The other tip that he said, okay, so what are we doing next? Um, embroider the shelves. Don't look like shelves though. What is it? What is it? It's like an outline of the cat. Hold on. The applique. The cat on the top. Oh, and then the outline of the cat. Okay, so then there's an outline. Huh. I wonder what color I should do the outline of the cat. And definitely when you cut your thread on top and then pull it through this way, the natural way your thread comes through. That's a definite. I mean, I kind of do that all the time. Sometimes I'm guilty of it. You know, I'm just kind of lazy. But um, I'm definitely going to do that now because, you know, it cost me a pretty penny. And um, this is kind of a Cadillac of, of the machines. I mean, it's not the top Escalade Cadillac, but um, I don't really know my Cadillac, so don't don't think I do. But um, the, the more... Um, expensive the machine the more it costs just like if you own a Volvo or a Lexus or something I'm putting black in to do the outline um, it costs more to fix them so I'm gonna try to follow all the different little tips that you know I kind of got picked up but he also said to thread the needle to put a white piece of paper behind where the needle is if you have issues with any of any of your needle threading he said this way here you'll be able to see better as opposed to, you know, trying to thread a needle with, you know, all of this. What the heck is that noise out there? Are those supposed to be eyes? Huh. I think they are. I don't know, they look a little weird. Um, so anyhow, let me blow those threads away. Um, so that was Bob and, um, Fingers crossed that he's good for another how many um, miles. I gotta tell you though, I, I think when I was either lifting the machines, either out of the car, bring them in the house, or I don't know what, I did something to my left uh, shoulder. And every time I go to lift my left arm, oh, I have such terrible pain. So if you hear me like kind of moan and groan, <laughs> I am right-handed. But still, um, it hurts to, to lift my left arm. So I'm thinking I, I pulled a muscle, you know, either twisting or, or taking the machines out of the car, bringing them home. And then I have to bring them upstairs. Okay, so now we're going to, um, now we're going to embroider the shelves. Okay, so um, let's, let's just stick with black. Okay, so that was the information on Bob. Now, uh, Bad Bob and Betty, she apparently had a lot of issues. Um, so they did the actual service, which is whatever they, that's what they call it. Um, and she was, she only had 711,447 stitches. Now, did they say how much Bob had? She don't have much stitches on her. So, 
they did they check the hook condition and the timing remove rotary hook polish and point adjust needle bar height she had a problem with her needle bar height he said it was like he didn't think it was coming down enough uh polish tension discs Restore damp, calibrate inner tension and main tension. He went over all this, but you know, I'm not going to remember. Adjust pressure bar height, clean and lubricate, reset service count, and uh, they tested the embroidery. So she was $115, but you know, um, I'm going to save this in my receipts and that. And um, the one thing is, you know, Betty was sitting here just collecting dust, literally. So if I can maybe, I, I really thought I would sell her. But like the Pierce had recommended, he said, well, you know, just keep her and just do, you know, smaller. Like she has a five by seven hoop. I mean, that's, that's nothing to squawk about. But it's also, you know, a decent size that I can do things. So if I'm doing a design that maybe I've done before and I kind of know the whole layout because her screen is just black and white. It's a little screen as opposed to this machine has a big color screen and it's big and you can see. Whereas hers is kind of more like Stone Age, you know. But if I'm doing something that, you know, I've done before and I know how it all works, then, you know, I think I've got to keep her. I think she's the keeper but you know in the event that I do decide one day to maybe sell her I could say that you know I had her service and I can know I just see this thread area here and I know that you know I had her serviced and um, she's in good working condition just want to trim some of this fabric here on the side so so that that my friends is the story Okay, there we go. Okay, let's put the hoop back in. And let's see what is the next step. Okay, next is going to be, I did the shelves. Embroider the ingredients on the shelves. Crystal, three outline jars, filled jar on top shelf. Detail inside. I'm going to bring that closer. I can't read it. Detail inside mold middle jar bower herbs fill in first jar on top of shell fill in okay so it's going to be all um filler things so it looks like it's going to be um i don't know let's see this just says kiwi green is going to be first now of course we have a green um bookcase here so mm, oh my arm so that's not gonna and I, every time I have to reach to, to pull this thread out boy I'll tell you so I don't know how long I'm gonna be here doing this tonight because it's just really aching aching me um okay let's see so they use the kiwi green not really sure what that thing is there I'm trying to determine what it is don't know um but man, they did green. Let's do a bright yellow. So that's the story, folks. Um, I know I had a lot of people were like, they couldn't wait for me to come back. And everybody was missing me. I'm looking for the yellow. I don't want that one. So I tried to get, get them back as soon as I could. Because I know I was missing them too. You know, you know, it's kind of like when you send a kid off to college and, you know, you, you go in their room and you look at their room all the time and, and just, you know, maybe touch the bed or do that kind of stuff. So I kind of would come in here and I'd be at my stamp table next door to this table and I just kind of like, you know, give the desk a little rub and <laughs> I know, silly, right? Silly, absolutely silly, but those of you that have machines, you can relate. I know you're out there. I know I'm not the only one. And I do have a bunch of stuff I need to get done for Delilah, too, for my uh, granddaughter, because the shower is coming up in um, less than two weeks. And I have a couple projects I want to finish up for, for that. So, yeah, we got 
lots, lots to do. Lots and lots and lots. Okay. So next it says chrome. So I'm just going to go, ooh, my arm. I'm just going to go by the um, color on the screen, what it says. So, and, and I don't know where I put my, did my threads go in the bottom of this bucket? Oh, you know what? I bet they did. Oh, there they all are. I had special colors that I was using throughout the whole stitching of this. And that's where I put them. I put them in the basket with all the Halloween fabrics. Like, you know, I was so organized. <laughs> okay, let me find a chrome. I think I was using a light gray. A light gray. I guess I could do white. Oh, here's a gray. Okay, this will work. So... So anyhow, um, I am so behind on all of these um, blocks for Sweet Pea. What the heck is going on with this thread? And um, when I went through, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I don't know, four or five blocks behind. And now they came out with a Christmas one. Did y'all see that? I'm like, yeah, no, I can't do that. I gotta finish one thing before I finish another, and I already got a lot of things going on my plate here. All right, let's put this. <sighs> what am I doing? Use the pressure foot. Oh, I'm gonna put the thing. See, I don't even remember how to work the machine. Ah, I gotta put the foot down. Oh, so I have a lot of stitching to do and I really don't think somebody had asked me uh, we have a Facebook group if you're brand new here and you don't know um, over stitch with Sue on Facebook so come on over and join somebody asked me if I was doing the um, designed by Juju the um, Christmas uh, uh, skirt you know the tree skirt yeah no I just can't you know I just you know, I'm I'm a little overwhelmed with being so backed up on these because, you know, I feel like, um, you know, I, I need to get caught up. So I can't possibly start any more new things until I finish this. But I only wish that, you know, Sweet Pea would have waited, you know, at least till we finish the Halloween one, right? Okay, next is called Newport, and that looks like a dark, deep green. I don't know what I know these this this neighbor and it's kind of like a business down around the corner I'm gonna kind of use this one this color and he cuts the grass and does the yard work at the oddest times so it's 652 according to Bob's um, clock well I have 656 he, Bob's off a little bit but um, it's it's pitch black outside and he's out there cutting the grass I could hear it. The one night it was like almost 10 o'clock and he's out there doing the grass. Isn't that crazy? I don't know. To each his own, I suppose. So let's see what else has been happening. So I hope those of you that um, were affected by the hurricane, I hope everyone is doing well. I know we've been keeping touch on the Facebook group. I uh, have a little chat going on there. So if you'd like to join in on that, you're more than welcome to come join. And people have been, you know, checking in and keeping us all informed. We're all keeping you in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible, devastating, you know, event. It was like the whole side of the East Coast was affected by it. It's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy how this was um, affecting everyone. But um, just I just want you all to know that you are in my continued thoughts and prayers and um, maybe coming here tonight, you know, sitting around, chatting around the embroidery machine, maybe it gives you a little distraction from your worries and all of the issues that are going on around you. And just take a little time for yourself. This is why um, I enjoy bringing this to you. I enjoy them because I like doing them too. So I figured if I like doing them, there's got to be other people out there that would enjoy watching. Or maybe you pick up a little hint or tip here and there. You know. So anyhow. But this 
square that I'm doing. I don't know. Is it number eight? I don't even know what number it is, but it's the one with the witch and a cauldron. So it does have, it's 64 minutes. So there's no way I'm going to be able to, I'm already at 25 though, but it has almost 32,000 thousand stitches my goodness so we're gonna give Bob a run for his money and I do plan on doing some videos on uh, the PE 770 over there on Betty um, I want to try her out just doing maybe uh, one of the dime uh, cats just try her out doing that and just see how things are going with her and um, so those of you that have you know the older machines I don't want you to feel left out. You know, I want everyone to be able to join in. You know, I know we all can't afford these expensive machines. Heck, I couldn't have afforded this expensive machine if it wasn't for, you know, having good credit. But um, they are expensive. But FYI, you do want to take care of them. So you do want to have them regularly serviced. So it doesn't end up costing you a lot of money because, yeah, we all know how much that could be. I'm half tempted to go back to that spider web down on the bottom and instead of it being black to do it like white. I oh, don't know. I'm half tempted. I may, I may go back. I don't know. I don't, I would have to probably do it now before I go any further, but I'm just going to leave it. Let's just leave it. next color this is funny it's Aaron Green it's like my son's girlfriend's name Aaron Aaron Green I'm not sure what color that would be it's showing a fluorescent color but being you know my bookcase is that so I don't know let me uh, let me dig in the bottom of this fabric selection um not fabric selection thread get out all my threads I was using working on this so yeah I have a couple baby things to work on so oh, my laptop just went black and um, I do want to do some personalization I have um, a few more little bibs and things to do um, I have a little blanket to do um, sorry I keep hitting you guys I'm, I'm so sorry it's just a hot mess here with this thread Okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh gosh, I could hear it. Can you hear the lawnmower? I'm that's what he's using. So yeah, I messaged my daughter and I said, home sweet home. I think it was about two, ooh, ooh I really hit you that time, my wheelie chair. I think it was about um, 2.30 by the time I got home. So I went to work today and I left work at like, um, well, we only work seven and a half hour days. So I took a half day, which means um, quarter to 12. And I left right from work to go to Allentown. And it's about an hour drive, a little over an hour. But the traffic, oh my goodness. When I was going down the turnpike, the opposite direction, I thought, oh, I hope I don't hit that on the way home where they were doing construction. The traffic was lined up, I want to say like a good mile. I can't imagine, you know, I'm very spoiled where I live because I'm only a mile and a half from here to work. I can't imagine having to travel that, you know, every day or to have to do like an hour drive. And I know a lot of people do it. I know a lot of you do it. God bless you because I'm so spoiled with living so close to work. And you know, I, mean, I can leave my house at quarter to eight, get there, punched in, and be sitting at my desk at eight o'clock in the morning and ready to work. So, okay, this is a lot of thread changes. A lot of thread changes. But I'm just picking different threads. I don't even know what colors I should pick. I'm just picking different colors. But it's, yeah, it's, it's so silly because it's like one minute, one minute, one minute. Okay, so this one is one minute. The next one is, it must be the bookcase itself. It's three minutes. So we'll get a little, a little time to chat and not have to be 
me so I know a lot of you said you miss chatting you miss hearing my stories I'm not so sure I have any like real exciting stories but um, yeah I've really not done anything oh I did do a class this week with my stamping I'm looking for a brown color to do the bookcase And uh, I was supposed to have four, four students. Oh, I don't know what the heck that thing is. That's weird. Looks like the top of a shoe. <laughs> but um, ended up, I had five students. And I had two women that, well, one had been to a class of mine before. It's just from with my stamping. And it's an adult education class at a local high school. And the one had been at my classes before. And the one woman was brand new. And I don't know, I, I've been doing um, the stamping 22 years. How many times I thought of hanging up my ink pad and, and my, you know, my embossing gun and just saying, you know, I'm, I'm like done with this. Okay, so we're gonna do the bookcase. This is three minutes. But half of me still keeps pulling me back because I love it so much. But when you have a new stamper, you kind of forget, you know, and I think it's me. I'm, I'm just ignorant to the fact that, you know what, this woman is brand new and she has no idea what any of this stuff is. And it's been so long since I've had like a new stamper that I, I felt bad for her. And then in the end, you know, she was like really stressed. And I think it was supposed to be, it's supposed to be fun for all of us, you know, not to be stressed. So I think in the end, um, it turned out that she was having a good time, and, um, and next next week, well, this coming week, um, I'll have a better handle on things. Like when you walk into a room and you don't really know what you have to deal with, it's the most difficult thing to have to do because you don't really know the people. I mean, there was two, th no, three. Three of them I actually did kind of know, but... Um, yeah, it gets a little stressful. So if you're wondering, what did we make there? Come on over to uh, Stampin' Sue Creates on Facebook. I do a Facebook Live on there every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So last night I did the Facebook Live and I actually did the projects that we did Wednesday night. And I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna be doing for the month of October because it's just so much on my plate. When they asked me to do it, I don't know what I was thinking, or I just wasn't thinking. Because I have the shower coming up, I have, um, I said, I'll, I'll do a dessert table. So I have all that to do. So I am taking the Friday off before the shower, which I think is the 21st. The shower's the 23rd of October. So I'm planning on, um, you know, doing some things before then, some chocolate dipping, wanted to try my hand at cake pops. Um, my daughter's having a cow theme, like a baby cow theme. So I wanted to do some pretzel rods dipped in white chocolate and put some black spots on. Um, these peanut butter balls that I make, chocolate chip cookies, um, Rice Krispie treats dipped in, you know, and have pink and white and yeah. And I don't know what else. But my daughter's like, no, don't go too crazy. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. She knows how we are. So if anybody has any suggestions for um, any kind of little, like little finger food desserts, like I don't want cake or pie or anything like that, but just something that, you know, people just pick. I did get little containers that um, people could take stuff home in. And... Um, so let me know what you all think, if you have any ideas of anything. Okay, so let's see. So next, uh, the witch's hair. Witch's hair in the back. So they show her hair being like this creepy green. I don't know, creepy green. What color hair for a witch? I mean, right away you would think black, but I think the black, ooh, I'm sorry. The black would um, chime in too much. Maybe. Let me look at my colors. I mean, I do have more than enough colors. Maybe like this kind of purple. Um, I mean, I love purple. I don't want to do the dark one. Where's the dark one? I think the dark one might be too dark. You might not see it. Um, 
I can do like a putrid green. <laughs> oh, putrid green. <laughs> Probably many of you are like, oh, so just pick a color. How about if I do this? No, that would blend in too much. This is a variegated color. That would blend in too much with the shelf there. Okay, that's not going to work. Um, what was that color I just showed? Let's just do that. This is kind of like a light purple color. I could do orange, gold, yellow, but you know. I haven't really even been looking at what everyone's been stitching with this design for this. Which one? Because you know what? I was so sad that I didn't have my machine. Oop. So um, I didn't really want to look. So my witch is going to have a lavender hair. I hope it shows up. enablers to one another, aren't we? And I hate to be that, but unfortunately I am that. But I just like to share with you, you know, and maybe you pick up a tip or so, or, you know. Now, some of the things I did on that shelf, I probably should have picked a different color because you really can't see them too well, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, so let's see. Which is hair? Oh, the next is going to be the face. They have it as a medium gray. Huh. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't want to do medium gray. I think that would be too dark. I think I'm going to go with like a tan. Oh my gosh, my mind is just. It's a good thing I work for orthopedic surgeons because when I go to work on Monday, I can. It's still bothering me. I'm hoping not. Maybe like this gray. I'm hoping not <clears throat> because, um, <coughs> ask them to look at it. I'm sure I just pulled a muscle and I'm sure it'll just be fine. But, boy, it does hurt. Well, I am not really doing anything, ex you know, very ecstatic. Oh, her face is only very little, so I'm going to go with that gray color. Let's cut our thread. Boy, that does hurt. Ooh, gosh. So let's see, where are we at? We're at 44 minutes. I'm gonna do a little bit more and then I'm gonna stop for the night. And um, only because I just, well, first off, you know, you probably all have things to do. I'm like, you know, I really, I, this, this is my thing to do. Um, this is what ooh, well, this is what I've been missing for two weeks now, so I'm happy to be back doing this. But with my shoulder hurting, I'm gonna go put some ice on it or something. Or I may have some Voltaren gel that I could rub in. Okay, so she's gonna have a great face. Yeah, because I have another half an hour to stitch this. I may need to get to the And the outline 
around the base. So they're calling for dark cherry. And I'm kind of limited as to uh, medications I can take. Because I only have, um, I, I try to be very careful because of you know, only having the one kidney to try to protect it. Because um, everything you take in by mouth is filtered through your kidneys. So um, not that there's anything diseased with the kidney that I have remaining, but it's just I want to keep it you know, safe for some time, you know, at least till, till the end of my time. But my daughter laughs at me all the time because I'm always, you know, saying things. She's like, oh, I'll give you one of my kidneys, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I really don't want to even think of that, about, oh, about that route. All right, so that, um, then after this, we're going to be black. I know, Dory, I know. Mom's working up here, right? We haven't been up here for some time. Oh, there's her lips. Oh, her lips really stand out. I know, Doris. I know. Say hello to all of our friends out there. Oh, here's a small little black, so I won't have to get up and do that. Okay. What do you all do with all your threads, you know, when you, you trim them? I've seen some women that they had, like, these huge, huge mason jars filled up to the top with um all their threads that you know you cut off and um and all that what do you all do with your threads let me know i know you're like how many questions you're gonna ask us well you know maybe you don't want to answer one of them oh can you see her face now <gasps> i love it oh i love it I probably should have used a, a variegated thread for the cat. Wouldn't that have been cool? I think so. Ooh, look at her nose. Doris, look at Dorothy. Okay, what's next? Oh, next we're doing... Yeah, it's almost like you don't want to stop. Next it's going to be um, like her dress kind of thing. So I don't want to use black. I won't be able to see the outline. So oh, we're not done with applique yet, folks. We are still doing applique. Still doing the applique. Ooh, I wonder what kind of dress fabric I'm going to use. <clears throat> um, you know what? I have these beautiful plaids from um, Creative Notions from that set. I don't want to do purple. I already have too much purple. I don't want to do green. Ooh, I have this, um, how would that be for her dress? Oh, maybe too much. See, I wish you guys could talk to me. I wish you could talk and tell me what you think. That looks like a white wash. Mm. All right, maybe something from my bucket here. Dory, you're knocking all my threads around. Are you doing that? <laughs> she loves it. She's going after the one thread. There you go. Can you play with that? Don't eat it. Do not eat it. Good play. Just play. No eatsies. All right. Let's see. I'm looking at a yellow. <clears throat> I mean, a witch wouldn't really have a uh, yellow dress, would she? Not normally. I mean, I have so many of these purples. Look at that. Ooh. But let's do an outline first, and then we know where, where we're going. So I'm going to do this lilac color. I'll be able to see. So this is going to be another applique, and it's going to be her dress. So let's see how big we are with the dress, and then we can determine which fabric to use. I keep, I keep venturing toward purple in this bin here. This bin. Here's like an orangey. Let's see, how big is this going to be? Oh, it's going to be pretty big. Yeah. She's going to have a pretty big dress there. We don't want to give her anything cutesy. 
<laughs> it was like witch's hat. No, that's, see, that's purple again. So stop with the purple. All right. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself, you know? That's like a plaid. No, I don't want to do that. La, la, la. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a cool color. It's not really black, but no, that's going to blend in too much. See, I don't want to go with anything that's going to blend. These have pumpkins on. They're black, though, too. Can you see that on there? Maybe that. Maybe, maybe. Let me cut a piece of it. Let me cut it. Make it half, kind of, sort of. So those of you that um, actually sit and do the design, well, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I really don't. Let's just put that there and see what see what we've got. And then maybe after this, I'll take a break. So the good thing about this machine is when you want to stop, you could just stop and um, it'll remember when you come back. Oh, I should have used this other fabric. Well, let me trim this and see what it looks like. I mean, worst case scenario, the one thing with applique, and I'm going to have to move you a little bit, is um, you could always take a, you could always go back in the design and um, stitch a different piece over it if you don't really like it. I've done that. I have done that indeed. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if I like this. I think it's too busy. I think it's too busy. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go with this instead. I'm just going to stitch right over that previous one. I think this will be better. It won't be so, so much in your face. She's running around in circles, chasing her tail. That always makes me laugh. You know, I, I mean, do they not know that it's connected to them? <laughs> She's just going around in circles. I don't know if you could hear her. It's too funny. She usually does that at night. I see her doing that at night all the time. Like if I'm downstairs watching, you know, a movie or something. Okay. One more trimming there. Just blowing the little pieces away. You don't really want to see them dancing in the frame. Yeah, I think that's better. Tilt just back. I thought it was done with the applique. Apparently not. Okay, so let's get our black back. The thread. And then I think we're going to stop. This is three minutes. It's going to do the outline. And um, I'm going to do a little um, thread chicken here. I think I have more than enough on here, but eh, I'm not really sure. But we'll find out. So I hope you're enjoying this after not, you know, seeing Bob for quite some time. Catching up on things. Yeah, I don't really have too much more um, that's happened in my life. Kind of like, like 
story, I guess. You can really see that, are you? I don't know. Maybe you don't. Yeah, it'll fill in. So it's doing, I guess, the call from it? Yeah. Um, part of the dress and sentence is around the bottom and the side of the dress. I think after this, I'm going to um, call it, and um, I'll take a picture of it as far as I got to do as my thumbnail, but um, come on over to the uh, Facebook group, oh, I don't know, in about a day or so, maybe I'll be able to finish it tomorrow. I do want to start working on some of the things for the shower, though, so it'll be, you know, I don't know, I'll try, I'll try tomorrow. I'll take a picture of how far we've, we've gotten with it. And uh, this way, if you're thinking of, oh, did I miss all that to trim? Did I miss that? No, I didn't. So if you're um, working on this, you can go ahead and get started or do some catch up on, on other blocks that you might have missed. But the designs you can get at 30% off now during this whole uh, mystery quilt thing going on, which is nice. Yeah, this is gonna be three minutes. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna call it. I'm about halfway through. Well, it's 64 minutes right now, it's at 36. So, so I've enjoyed chatting with you all. I hope, um, I hope I haven't been too boring. Hope you've been enjoying yourselves watching this fun block stitch out after us not being together for quite some time. But um, I hope you have some fun plans for the weekend. It certainly has gotten much cooler here in Pennsylvania. I've been actually, um, I have not turned the heat on yet, but I do have some little, um, a little heater that I have in my fireplace that I turned on a few times just to get the chill out because I'm normally like a very warm person I'm not normally like cold all the time but um, sometimes the, the house inside is colder than the outside it just gets that chill in it and sometimes you just got to throw on a little I don't want to put the furnace on but oops I just want to oh this is going to be the cauldron I think right here just want to get like that little nip out of the air and um, just warming up a teensy bit. But there's nothing like the cool, crisp mornings or evenings in the fall. I don't know how you, what you think about it, but I really enjoy them. I like the fall. Fall is probably, you no, know, fall is the best time of the year for me. I do love it. Although my body takes a while to get used to the cooler temps. All right. Okay, folks, so we have 64 minutes total. We're at 37, and the video's almost one hour. My goodness gracious. So I'm going to stop now. I will take a picture of this and use it as the um, the uh, thumbnail for, for this project, but <clears throat> I think it's really coming along nice. Um, I love her face. Love it, love it, love it. And... Um, I think it's going to be really cute when it's done. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you had a good evening. Um, I hope you, we spent a little bit of time together. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I certainly know that I did. And um, I will be back soon. And be sure to subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. That red rectangle box. And I had a question the other day. Somebody was like, I don't see no bell. There's no bell. There is, when you look at that little subscription box, right to the right of that, there's a little tiny bell. And if you hover over that, you'll be able to choose if you want to be notified um, for each video, for occasionals, or there's like three choices. Definitely click the bell for every video so you don't miss out on anything. And if you don't, if you come here and you like the embroidery, but you don't like the chit chat, it's okay to fast forward. Or if this isn't your thing, then there's plenty other YouTube channels that you can check out for sure.
but um, this is this is my style. This is what I do. I'm not going to change what I do. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to wish you all a farewell for this evening. We are at one hour. So um, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for all your well wishes for, for Bob and Betty and their safe home. We're all safe home. And I'm um, looking forward to many, many more stitch alongs with you. So have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Till next time, happy stitching. Bye for now.